Hey everybody, welcome! Today I am playing Impious Pumpkins. Thank you for joining me, you guys are spectacular. And I am so excited to show off this game to you all. Um, developed by Note Missing Games. I say Note as if there's a question mark behind it, and in fact, there is. So it's Note Missing Games. <laughs> Um, Impious Pumpkins is a cute, spooky, real-time tactics game where you take control of your own ghostly army to defend their resting places from hordes of evil pumpkins. Yeah, this game is pretty fun. I had played it for a little while and um, just had to show it off to you guys because I figured it was worth showing off. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so, if you enjoy tower defense type games, um, this one is basically that, minus the fact that your units are stationary. Um, you have four different ghosts, or ghost types, to choose from. You have a warrior, which is the one highlighted here, um, a ranger, a mage, and a healer of sorts. Now, of course, the number above each of these units uh, is the energy cost. And your energy bar is on the left-hand side here. So, let's go ahead and read what the tutorial has for us. The icons indicated by the red arrows are your four different ghostly units. Left-click on one of the buttons or use the Q, W, E, R keys on the keyboard to choose the corresponding ghost. Your current selected ghost will be highlighted in red. By default, your melee ghosts will be selected, which is the button with the sword icon. You can click on the map to summon it. Oh, my bad. Did not mean to do that. Okay, so I just summoned a melee or warrior type ghost. Every time you summon a ghost, it consumes energy, like I was saying before. The bar and the number above it indicates how much energy you have at the moment. If your current energy is not sufficient to summon a specific ghost, the button will be faded. Blue orbs will appear randomly on the map so you can refill your energy bar. Just click on them to collect it. Um, so being that I have played this before, some of these orbs are parked behind objects like this lamp here and can be kind of difficult to click for whatever reason. Um, and if you do not click on an orb to collect the energy, it will go away. It will disappear. So be mindful of that as well. Um, so playing this game too, I think it's great. There are things that I would suggest, of course, playing other tower defense type games myself and or real-time tactics games myself. Um, so for starters, I would suggest, um, having a sort of radius because what happens is these rangers only have a certain radius within, um, you know, where they can shoot or hit enemies. Um, so when you have, like, a certain unit selected, maybe have, I don't know, um, a transparent uh, unit on your cursor with a radius around it, and when you press it, or when you press, you know, the mouse button to activate a unit, then the radius disappears, or something like that. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to explain what I'm visualizing here, but think maybe you get the gist of it. And another thing too, so like, for example, I guess these 
healers. They do have a radius themselves. You can see the radius, the healing radius itself. Um, which is nice. So that's one suggestion. Um... Hmm. I thought I had another suggestion, I just can't think of it right now. I'm sure it'll come up at some point. Healer guy is not taking any sort of damage. Oh, there, now he is. So I gotta say that the uh, the game aesthetics um, are very nice. I, I kind of half wish I would have been able to. Um, play the game around Halloween time, because this is obviously a very fitting Halloween title. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's cute and spooky, so, you know, definitely fits the spooky theme of Halloween in October and whatnot. Gotta have myself a pumpkin spice latte. Oh, see, see what I'm talking about? Now I'm spawning units. I cannot click on this orb back here. It was, like, very, very hard to click. And I did not mean to spawn that many units. Just whatever, but... Oh, that's right. Okay, so I was just thinking about the other suggestion that I had, too, for the game. Um, and that is enemy priority. So, there is not much to the game other than Q, W, E, R, and then the left mouse click. Um, but it would actually be kind of nice if you could mouse over certain enemies and right click on them to prioritize that enemy um and thus it would make like the warrior or melee units chase after them um sometimes the warriors i feel are out here and the guy that i need to be destroyed is over here and they don't always register that, you know, hey, I, I want to go over here and attack this guy. No, they kind of just sit still. Um, so again, that's just, you know, a suggestion. And, I mean, even... Even when, for example, there's that tornado-looking guy right over here. He's spawning up. Um, if there are several other units on this side, but I need him gone because he's a mage. And he's one of the more difficult enemies to take care of. I would like some priority set there instead of the units over here. Um, makes sense. It does to me. Might not to you, but <laughs> just thought I'd suggest it anyway. Uh, what's really cool, too, is there is a skill tree for your units. Um, and they all cost one skill point after completing a level. You get one skill point. I believe that after completing the area, or the resting place that you are in, you get two skill points. Um, and I guess here's my third suggestion. Is that when selecting a skill to upgrade, it would kind of be nice if you were prompted with, are you sure? Yes or no? Something like that. Um, like, select this skill, yes or no. Because once you select the skill, there is no going back. So you really have to be cautious of what you are selecting. Otherwise, once you select it, it's one and done. Um, but you do get a reset at some point, too. So that's nice. But I believe the reset, you can only do it once per you know, three rounds or three levels that you complete. So, again, 
just be wary of that. And you can only spend up to 20 points. Zero out of 20. So right now I'm going to select plus five life for your ghost warriors. Um, and there are some pretty cool abilities that your units gain as you progress within the game. Um, there's definitely a lot to choose from. So, anyway, let's go ahead and continue on to the next level here. I like that it loads up nice and quick. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> the voices are pretty funny. I rather enjoy that. <laughs> I'm going to start off with two rangers and three melee guys. Hopefully that works out at a decent pace. Alright, I think I'm set on that. I think I want to work up towards a mage now, because the mages, they are pretty powerful. Um, the cost is a bit high. But that's totally understandable. I mean, they pretty much have this entire map to just wreak havoc on enemies. And what's also pretty nifty about these healers is not only do they heal, but at some point um, you can give them additional abilities for units that are within the uh, healing radius. So, for example, um, like sped up attack speed for enemies that are within the radius, you know. So, that's nice to have in certain circumstances, for sure. Let's place another warrior here. But to complement the game, um, yeah, I, I, again, I really do like the aesthetics. The sound effects are great. The music fits the theme. Um, the visual effects and all that kind of stuff, like, it, it works really well. And it plays well. The mechanics fit what they're going for. Um, and I haven't really encountered a single bug in this demo. So that's always a plus too. Um, now, I know that they plan on releasing it sometime next year. I don't know exactly when. I believe they said... Oh wait, no, it's not next year. It is this year. I was just looking on uh, their website, or well, their Steam page, rather. And it says that they're going to release it, looks like, next week. So that's pretty cool. I was thinking of a different game. I think I was thinking of uh, You Suck at Parking. I was playing that game a little bit too, but... Not to shift gears, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool that this game's gonna be released within the next week or so. It's also one of those games where you can kind of just sit back and let the game play itself. There is obviously a bit of thinking to do behind it, but it's not like it's not, like, too difficult. It's like, if you end up getting overwhelmed by other units, you know, once you are overwhelmed by, what is it, 50 units or so, you lose the match. So, and, you know, if time runs out and there are more pumpkin units than there are ghost units, then you also lose. So, those are the lose conditions for the game. Um... But yeah, and, and it definitely can get overwhelming very, very quickly. So you do have to pay attention to the game at least. But overall, it is kind of nice to just sit back and relax, collect the orbs, and um, yeah, just place units willingly.
Um, actually, I just thought of another thing, too, is for games like this that have waves, um, a lot of the pumpkins kind of just spawn at random, where I almost kind of wish there was, like, a wave timer. So in the very top or something along those lines have, like, wave one, and then however many units you have left. Um, and then prepare more units, and then wave two or something. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily need to be that way. You kind of just have to prepare for the worst for this game. And again, these are just suggestions for the game. Um, but overall, the game works, it functions, it plays the way it should, and it can definitely be challenging. So, there's that. I'm going to do one more level here, um, and then, you know, you guys will get your chance to play the game for yourselves next week. And I definitely recommend it. Um, there is quite a few levels to choose from. There is, like, an endurance mode for each of the areas. And, yeah, I mean, you could just try your hand at, you know, enduring the onslaught of pumpkins. So I'm not really paying attention here like I should be. But I think I'm sitting okay. I'm going to go for a mage next. You do get 10 energy points per orb. And I'd say that that's, that's pretty decent. Another thing with the skill tree is for the melee and rangers, I do believe that you can purchase a skill that decreases their energy cost. Um, which again can be very beneficial in certain circumstances. Especially since they do cost 10. Um, the melee units would cost 10. Orbs cost 10, melee units would cost 10. You know what I'm saying. Every time you get an orb, you'd be able to basically throw out a melee unit. It's pretty nice. Alright, I'm gonna throw out another mage just for the sake of taking this guy down. Which it doesn't actually look like I'm gonna be able to get him. Let's, let's get three units going here. Because I don't like that guy being there. <laughs> I don't like him being there at all. Alright, two minutes, 30 seconds to go. Can I do it? I think so. I'm sitting pretty good, I think. Yeah, that guy just got murdered hard. I hope you like pumpkin pie. There sure is a lot of uh, mashed pumpkins out here. Yeah, these guys don't even last two seconds. Yeah, like, for real. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of weird that after a unit dies, uh, the fire or the flames last a bit I don't know why that is but you know maybe it maybe it doesn't do anything maybe it's not supposed to be there 
or something, and maybe that is a bug. Who knows? Oh no! It really is a cute game, though. <laughs> Little sounds that ghosts make. It's pretty funny. Oh no! <laughs> Makes me chuckle. Yeah, this is cake, man. I'm sitting real good. It's definitely good to have warriors parked on the outside. And then all your rangers parked in the middle there. I've noticed that to be one of the better tactics. Of course, there's still a lot that I have to learn about tactics and such. Um, okay, so let's see here. I almost kind of want more life for my rangers. That seems to be a good idea. Yeah, see, so you can reset that there. Oh, I got three points. Okay, so if that's the case. Then I think I want... Where's that cost down there? That's decent. Poison cloud for each stone that hits an enemy. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm not going to take forever trying to decide this, but I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to choose that one, and that will do it. Yep. All right. Cool. And I'm sorry, guys, but I am going to wrap it up there because I don't want it to be too lengthy. It's definitely, um, it definitely could be a lengthy playthrough. So here are all of the levels here um we have like the graveyard we have like a haunted mansion um like an alleyway almost like a road an alleyway or something like that um a tomb and maybe like a cornfield or something like that i haven't gotten that far i've only gotten to like level 11 um i just deleted my save is what i did so but yeah anyway Again, this game was developed by Note Missing Games. You can go follow them at missing underscore games over on Twitter. Give them some love and support and wishlist their game as it does, again, come out. Slated release for next week, December 14th. And yeah, I enjoyed this game. I had a lot of fun with it. Obviously, I have some suggestions for the game. Um, and I look forward to hearing from the developer on what they thought about those suggestions, too. Um, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe um, and comment about what you thought about it. I'd like to hear your feedback on it. Go follow me over on Twitter, at IndieDropGaming, I believe. Is that is that right? Or is that IndieDropNews? It might be IndieDropNews. I think IndieDropGaming is my YouTube. That's right. Um, there's a lot of changes that I'm trying to go with the name. I'd like Indie Drop just by itself for my Twitter, but obviously that's not going to happen for some time, I think. Thanks again for watching, guys. You guys are awesome individuals, and we will catch you in the next video.